All right. So um, this is week number two that we're covering integumentary system. If you joined us last week or you listened to the recording from last week, um, you'll notice that we only got through a couple of questions. Um, last week, and then a lot of the conversation revolved around the new testing updates that they've released um, from AAPC. Um, really, it's the practice testing um, where it includes fill in the blanks. Um, but, um, and since most of the conversation revolved around just the changes and and just, it was kind of like a Q&A really for most of the session last week. So, I decided to continue integumentary this week so that we can make sure that we're covering each one of the sections um, as evenly as possible. And I mean, there's going to be some weeks that we're going to get through a little bit quicker. There's going to be some weeks um, that it's, it's going to slow down. So we can just kind of judge it as we go. Um, if I feel like we need two weeks on a certain topic, then we can expand it. Um, there's definitely some topics in that I think that we're going to spend more than one week on. Um, as you know, just the ones that I know that a lot of people have sh uh, troubles, um, and a lot of questions on, um, so that's why we're going over and just starting at question number five for integumentary for this week. So again, we have started reviewing CPT, whereas the last, uh, or the first couple of weeks we reviewed only ICD-10. Um, and these questions we're going to review mostly CPT. Um, and then every now and then you'll see a question where your ICD-10 um, kind of peeks its head in as well. So that way we're we're still practicing and keeping those guidelines and things in the forefront um, of our minds. So let's start with number five, um, where Meredith has breast cancer on the left side. They um, It was diagnosed by an excisional biopsy that was performed last week. Today, she is having a radical mastectomy urban type, and then concurrently, they're also having a single pedicle tram flap reconstruction with supercharging. Um, so what CPT codes are we going to report? So for our procedure um, that we're going to code, what is the main term that um, we want to report or that we want to look up in the alphabetic index? So what's our procedure that we're performing? Mastectomy. Yep. Yep, it's a mastectomy. So we will go to mastectomy within the alphabetic index. Underneath mastectomy, we have quite a few options. I mean, there's not really a ton. Um, but there is enough um, that we have to kind of think about what type of mastectomy did we do. Um, so it's a radical mastectomy. So here's our main term. Let me get that highlighted in. Let's do this color. Um, and then it's a radical mastectomy. So underneath radical it's going to give us a range of codes that we want to go look at. What codes does it tell us in the alphabetic index under mastectomy radical that we want to go look? One nine three, not one nine three oh five. I'm, I'm looking for the range at this point um, that the alphabetic index tells us that we want to go look at. It's 19303 through 19306. So, Puny, it's telling us right here that it's a radical mastectomy. So we've got a radical mastectomy, and it tells us to go look at 19303 through 19305. So let's go take a look at the radical mastectomies for 19303 and 19305. Oh, 
And then once we're in the code section, we have 19303, which is for a simple mastectomy. Uh, 19305 is your mastectomy radical, including your pectoral muscles, axillary lymph nodes. And then actually we should, I, we need to look at 19306 as well. It says 19303 to 19306. I think I said 19305. So then our 19306 is a mastectomy radical. Again, we know that that's what we did. Um, including the pectoral muscles, axillary and internal, mammary lymph nodes, and then in parentheses, it tells us that it is that urban type. So if they give us the details of the pectoral muscles, axillary and internal mammary lymph nodes, then we can use the 19306. If they just tell us that it's urban type, then we can still use the 19306 because we know that that urban type <clears throat> is what is known as the radical mastectomy that includes the pectoral muscles, axillary, and internal mammary lymph nodes as well. So 19306 is going to be our code for the radical mastectomy. From a testing perspective, we already know what our answer is, okay? However, from a coding from scratch, we still want to make sure that we know how to look at the rest of the um, scenario and we know how to code the rest of the, the procedure. So we also need to code our single pedicle tram flap reconstruction with supercharging, okay? So if we're looking up in the alphabetic index, we're ignoring at this point the, the four options. If we're looking at the alphabetic index, what main term are we going to look up for our single pedicle tram flap reconstruction with supercharging? What's our main term? Does anybody have a guess? Tram? Yep, tram, T-R-A-M. Okay, so underneath the alphabetic index for tram, it actually tells us what that TRAM stands for, which is your transverse rectus abdominis myocutaneous, and that's a flap. So we're doing it for breast reconstruction, and then we're looking at with supercharging. So that gives us our one, three, or I'm sorry, one, nine, three, six, eight. So let's go take a look at 19368. Just look at our code description, make sure everything matches. And our CPT code description for 19368 is a breast reconstruction with single pedicle transverse recti rectus abdominis myocutaneous or a tram flat requiring uh, separate microvascular anastomosis which is known as supercharging. So that's where we get the 19368. Again, we have to put the LT modifier on both of the codes because it was done only on the left breast. And then for the um, code that has the lower RVU value, that is where we will put the 51 modifier indicating that there are multiple procedures done on that same breast. Tiffany, can you repeat that? Um, I didn't understand the words you said. The, we put it on the 19306 because why? 
it has the lower RVU. Oh, RVU. So the relative, okay, yeah, yeah, relative value unit, the lower RVU. So basically it's our least complex procedure. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, absolutely. So why are we not coding in this scenario? Why are we not coding the excisional biopsy? Why are we only coding the radical mastectomy and the single pedicle tram flap? Because the biopsy was performed last week. Absolutely, yep. Because that was done last week, so that should be on a separate plane for a different data service. Yep, absolutely. So we are only supposed to code what is being done today. Okay. Any questions on that one? So the 51 modifiers for multiple procedures. Okay. Number six, a little bit longer of a scenario. Okay, but we need to get used to seeing those longer scenarios because these are going to be ones that will be similar to what's on the case studies on your CPC exam, if you're taking the CPC at least. Um, I know some people in here have been talking about taking maybe the CCS or the CCA, um, but for the CPC exam, these will be ones that will be in that case study question or uh, section. So we have a patient is an 81-year-old male with a biopsy-proven basal cell carcinoma of the posterior neck just near his hairline. Additionally, they have two other areas of concern on the cheek. Informed consent was obtained in the areas were prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion. Attention was directed to the basal cell carcinoma on the neck. I excised the lesion measuring 2.6 centimeters as drawn down to the subcutaneous fat. With extensive undermining of the wound, I closed it in layers using 4O monocryl, 5O proline, and 6O proline. The wound measures four and a half centimeters. Attention was then directed to the two other suspicious lesions on his cheek. After administering local anesthesia, I proceeded to take a three millimeter punch biopsy of each lesion and was able to close with 5O proline. The patient tolerated the procedures well. Pathology later showed that the basal cell carcinoma was completely removed and the biopsies indicated actinic keratosis. So we see that we have a couple different things that we have to report. So where do you wanna start? Um, usually I like to just start with whatever is listed first um, in the scenario. So we're first doing the um, attention to the basal cell carcinoma on the neck um, here. So this is procedure number one. So attention was directed at that basal cell carcinoma. They excised the lesion measuring 2.6 centimeters as drawn down to the subcutaneous fat. So what is our main term that we're gonna look up in the alphabetic index? What's the procedure that we perform? An excision, yep. So we'll go to main term excision. What are we doing an excision of? the skin. Yep. So the lesion is on the skin. So Zinnia, it's, it's easy to think that we need that we're doing it on the neck. That's the anatomic location that we're doing it. But really, we're not excising any tissue of the neck. We're excising the skin okay. of the neck. Yep. I got it. Yep. Thank you. For You're welcome. Fine. It's very fine easy. Fine. I know. That's a, that's a common <laughs> mistake. So that's why I wanted to make sure that that everybody was on the same page, that we're excising okay. the skin yeah, okay. versus if you were to do excision neck, we're talking about tissue within okay. it. Yep. Okay, gotcha. Perfect. It. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so underneath excision, 
will go to skin. And then underneath skin, we know that it's a lesion. So you have two options. You have a benign lesion and you have a malignant lesion. So in this scenario, we're looking at a basal cell carcinoma. Is that going to be a malignant lesion or a benign lesion? Malignant, yep. So we've got a bunch of different codes that we need to look at. They're all kind of in the same area. So let's go look at the 11600 to 604. So your 11600 to 604 is underneath the heading for uh, excision of malignant lesions. And then we see that we have three different anatomic groupings underneath the 11600 and basically the 11646. So that whole section that's for malignant lesions for excisions, we see that there are anatomic groupings. Does everybody see that? 11600 includes the trunk, arms, and legs. 11620 includes the scalp, the neck, the hands, the feet, and your genitalia. And then 11640 includes the face, ears, eyelids, nose, and lips. So in this scenario, because we are at the neck, and that lesion is measuring 2.6 centimeters, what code should we use? For that. Okay, 11623. Yep, yep, everybody agrees. 11623 for the excision of the uh, malignant lesion, which is the basal cell carcinoma. <laughs> so we've got three options that have 11623. Okay. So they talk about how they closed it in layers. Can we code the closure in addition to the excision? Does everybody know what the guideline says? about coding closures in addition to excisions. So your guidelines, if you're in the 2024 CPT, they're on page 91. They're on the page before your CPT code for 11623. So yes, Chrissy says, if it's more than a simple repair, then we can code the closure separately. So meaning if it's an intermediate repair or a complex closure, then we can report that separately. Does this closure constitute an intermediate or complex repair? Because they're not telling us simple, they're not telling us intermediate. Say the question again. You're fine. So it is the is our scenario telling us that it is an intermediate or complex repair. So this this part here that I have highlighted that I haven't made a color yet. No, it's complex. Why is this complex? Because of the depth of the wound, and they're telling you it's extensive. Well, with the extensive undermining. The depth of the wound isn't going to tell us whether or not it is a complex repair. But because of the extensive undermining, that's what's telling it's a complex repair. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. So, Christy, if they close it in layers... If there's anything that states that it's closed in layers, then that can and that can constitute an intermediate closure. In this scenario, 
extensive undermining that is considered a complex repair. Yep. So if you ever get confused about what your repairs are in the 2024 CPT manual, on page 94, do you have, um, the, who has 2023, who has 2024? I can give you a page for 2023. Give me just a second. And let me get my CPT book open. So in the 2023 book, your definitions are on page 90 and 91 for the repairs. They're on page 90 and 91 in 2024. Your repair definitions are on 94 and 95. So it tells you that your simple repair is when the wound is superficial um, and it requires just a single layered closure. If you have an intermediate repair, then it requires a layered closure of one or more deeper layers of the subcutaneous tissue in addition to that epidermal or dermal closure. And then your complex repair is your entire, you've got a whole paragraph and it talks about, um, in addition to your intermediate, um, it has to have exposure of bone, cartilage, tendon, or named neurovascular structure, debridement of any wound edges, extensive undermining. So here we've got our extensive undermining. Um, involvement of free margins of the helical rim, vermilion border, or the nostril rim, uh, or uh, placement of any retention sutures. So with this one, we have to report a complex closure. And again, our closures are going to be grouped by their complexity and then also by their anatomic location. So our anatomic location, again, is on the neck. So underneath complex for the neck, for a wound that measures four and a half centimeters, what code would we use? Yep, 13132, because that is a repair complex. It includes the forehead, cheeks, chin, mouth, neck, axilla, genitalia, hands or feet. And then it's 2.6 to 7.5 centimeters. So 13132 is going to be our closure. So believe it or not, our closure, our complex closure is going to have a higher RVU than the excision of a 2.6 centimeter malignant lesion. So that's why our closure is going to be listed first. Okay. What else do you think we're going to pull out of this scenario? Yep, our biopsies. So we've got punch biopsies that are done. Um, let's see. And they're on the cheek. Let's highlight this in purple. So they proceeded to take a three millimeter punch biopsy of each lesion. So our main term in our alphabetic index is going to be biopsy. That's our procedure that we're performing. Underneath biopsy, again, we're not biopsying the cheek. We're biopsying the skin of the cheek. So we'll go to skin lesion underneath biopsy. And then we did a punch biopsy. So what 
codes is that going to give us? Yep, 11104 and 11105. So 11104 and 11105, these don't have anatomic groupings in them, right? So these are just going to be per lesion. So you've got 11104 for the first lesion. And they have two that they're doing the punch biopsies on. So we should report 11104 for the first and then 11105 for the second. So why are we using a 59? Does anybody know? Why are we using a 59 modifier on the biopsies, but yet on the excision, we use the 51? Does anybody have any guesses? If you want to come off mute, feel free to. I know it might be a lot to type. The different sizes? Not different sizes. The different anatomic locations. Distinct procedural services? Distinct procedural services is 59. Yeah. 59. Right. right. So 51, we're using air on the... On the excision we're using the multiple surgery in in um, conjunction with the closure right because those are on the same area whereas the punch biopsies because they're done on a different anatomic location we'll use the 59 to indicate that they are distinct and separate from the excision and the closures why are we not using a modifier on 11105 So why would we use a modifier on the 04 and the 05? Yep, it's an add-on code. Perfect. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Modifiers can tend to be a little tricky. So especially in situations where we have some with a 51, some with a 59, and some not with one. I always like to make sure everybody understands why we're using the different ones and then why we're not and all of the things. So any questions on number six? So we would never use a modifier on an add-on code. Is that correct, Tiffany? Right, you would not use a 51 or a 59 on a modifier. Yep, Okay. because we're always gonna assume that there's gonna be another procedure that's in conjunction with it because they should never be reported alone. Yep, gotcha. Good question. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Let's look at number seven. So patient presents to the emergency department with multiple lacerations from a knife bite at a local bar. After examination, it was determined that these lacerations could be closed using local anesthesia. The areas were prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion. The surgeon documented the following closures. A 7.6 simple, uh, sorry, a 7.6 centimeter simple closure of the right forearm, a 5.7 centimeter intermediate closure of the right upper arm, a 4.7 centimeter complex closure of the right neck, and then a 10.3 centimeter intermediate closure of the upper chest. So we have multiple lacerations here. Some are simple, some are intermediate, some are complex. Which ones should we report first? The complex, yep. So the highest complexity should always be coded first. Just like when we have burns, remember our highest degree of burn is gonna be coded first. So same, com same concept here. So we'll first code the 4.7 centimeter complex closure of the right neck because that's the most severe. 
So in the alphabetic index, what is our main term? Repair, yep. So we'll go to repair. And then where are we gonna go underneath repair? What are we repairing? Can I ask a question? Of course. Okay, why would you not maybe go to the index and look under closure instead of repair? Um, You could possibly go underneath closure. There's multiple ways. Yeah, let me look at closure and let me see if it's under closure as well. It more than likely is. Yeah, it's under closure and then wound. Yep. And my first instinct was to look up laceration. Okay. So let's look at laceration. Let's see. I mean, like I said, sometimes there's multiple ways. Sometimes there's only two. Sometimes there's multiple. Let's see. La so if you look at laceration, then it tells you to look at the repair and then laceration. Yep. So depending on how your brain works, right? So just because I go to it one way, Dana's going to go to it another way. Charming's going to go to it another way, right? So it, even under repair, there's multiple ways that you can look it up. So as long as you get to that repair section, it doesn't really matter how you get to it. Sometimes there's going to be multiple ways. Now, if they're giving you, um, let me see, I'm looking. Yeah. So in here, if they're giving you the word closure, go look at the word closure. I just went to repair because I know that that's how they're, they're sequenced or they're organized. And that's like the heading, right? Because I've been doing it for so long. That's just the way that my brain works. Um, but again, there's multiple ways. So this is a good example of just because I do it one way doesn't mean that it's the only right way. Okay. So either way, if we go to closure, if we go to repair and then we either go to wound, we can go to skin and then wound. Um, you can go to laceration underneath repair. Um, actually, underneath laceration, it doesn't have skin. So if you were to go to repair and then laceration, then you would have to think, okay, where was the laceration? It was on the skin. Uh, but there's going to be multiple ways to get to it. So either way, we're in a complex closure, right? So we need to look at the 13100 through 13160. Does everybody see that grouping of codes regardless of how you've gone to your index? Does anybody not see the 13100 through 13, whatever code I said? <laughs> 13160, I think. Okay. So underneath our repairs, again, we see that they are um, grouped by anatomic locations or anatomic groupings, right? So here we're looking at the neck. So what is our code for the 4.7 centimeter complex repair on the neck? So Dana, it looks like you are in the intermediate section. So make sure that you're looking at the correct complexity. So one, three, one, three, two. I see a couple one, three, one, three, twos. Dana, do you see how your one, two, zero, three, five is under the intermediate and not the complex? I do. I thought okay. we were looking at the neck laceration part. Nope. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. Wait, did you say the, the neck laceration or the next laceration? The next one. So I was looking already at the intermediate. The 10.3, this one here. Okay. Yeah. No, you're fine. I just wanted to make sure you were in the right section and you saw, okay. Yes, so underneath the complex closure, we're looking at 13132.
Now, from right. a test taking standpoint, we know that we've knocked out a couple options, right? Um, that's how, um, from a test taking standpoint, I would have verified that one first. Yep. So then after our complex, we have our intermediate closures, right? So we have a 5.7 intermediate closure of the arm. And then we also have a 10.3 intermediate closure of the upper chest. So I'm not going to make you guys go back to the index because we've already figured out that there's like 800 different ways to look up your closure repairs. So in your intermediate section, Would we code the intermediate closures separately or are we going to add them together? Add the sums. Yep. We're going to add them together in this scenario because they're in the same anatomic grouping. Yep, Disha, you're correct. As long as they're within the same anatomic grouping, you can add them together. Now, had there been one on the arm and then one on the face, we would not add them together because they're different anatomic groups. But in this scenario, we can add them together because the arms, which are also your extremities, is in the same grouping with the chest, which is also the trunk. So we have 5.7 and 10.3. So that is what, 16? Yes, so 16 centimeters. So one, two, zero, three, five. Chrissy, even though you typed it wrong, I read it the right, the right one. So <laughs> I knew what you meant. <laughs> one, two, zero, three, five. And again, we're going to add the 59 because it's a different level of complexity. So they're distinct and separate from the complex closure. Okay. And then lastly, again, might make you go back to the index because we know how to look it up. We're going to look at our simple closure, which is going to be sequenced last because it's the least severe. So let's flip to the simple closures. And let's find the anatomic grouping for your arm. And then a 7.6 simple, 7.6 centimeter simple closure. I don't know why that's so hard for me to say tonight. I keep wanting to eliminate the centimeter portion. Yep. One, two, zero, zero, four. And again, a 59 to show that they're separate and distinct. from the others. So any questions on just lacerations in general, especially when you have multiple different complexities, different site, um, anything like that? Any questions on lacerations? Pretty simple once you get that guideline down of you can add them together if they're in that same anatomic grouping. Okay. So I Why are, a question go ahead, Karen. You. Yeah. From a testing standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, you know, comparing what's up there on the test, after we had coded 120.35, we could have actually gone on to the next question, right? Oh, absolutely. Same yeah. Time? Okay. Yep. From I mean, a test taking I, standpoint. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. You're welcome. Um, why are we not coding the local anesthesia? It's included. In what? In the, in the surgical package, right? So we know that anytime we use a local or a topical anesthesia, regardless of what procedure it is, it could be a biopsy, it could be a laceration, it could be anything. Anytime local anesthesia is used, that is included in that surgical package. So on the test, they may have um, the same answers as number as letter A, 
but then they might have an option that has the the local anesthesia or if they say lidocaine or whatever local anesthesia is used, they might have an option to see if you are paying attention to that um, surgical package, the global package that um, your local anesthesia is included. Perfect. Um, Sylvia, so if it's in the same anatomic location, we can sum up the wound size as long as, yes, as long as they are the same complexity and the same anatomic grouping that's listed underneath that complexity, then yes, you can add those together. Okay. Let's do number eight. So let's do this one from a test taking standpoint. And um, I think it was Karen that had asked the question about the, uh, it may have been Dana, um, whoever it was that had asked it. I've seen so many names come up, pop up tonight that my brain can't keep track of everybody already. Um, let's look at this from a test taking standpoint. So a process of elimination standpoint. So patient is here because the cyst in her chest has become, has come to a head and is still painful, even though she's been on antibiotics for a week. I offered to drain it for her. After obtaining consent, we infiltrated the area with one cc of 1% lidocaine with epinephrine, uh, prepped the area with betadine and incised and opened the cyst in the relaxed skin tension lines of her chest and then removed the cystic material. There's no obvious purulence. We are gonna have her clean this with Q-tip. We'll let it heal on its own and eventually excise it. Uh, I will have her come back a week from Tuesday to reschedule the surgery. So from a test taking standpoint, um, this one is a little, well, no, we've got, no, we don't have any that have, no, we have two ICD tents that are the same. Okay. So from a test taking standpoint, we can look at and rule out two either way, right? Because we either know it is L72.9 or we can say that it's not the L72.9. So Christy, yeah, you're kind of going down the same path that I'm going. Instead of eliminating a single one, I'm going to be able to eliminate two. And then if I eliminate two here between C and B, then I can also eliminate D as well. Yep. So L72.9. So look and see what our code description is for that. So L72.9 is a follicular cyst of the skin and subcutaneous tissue, unspecified. So what do we think? Do we think that the L72.9 matches our scenario here for the cyst in our chest? Do we think that that's going to be considered a follicular cyst in the chest? Yep. So we know it is either B or C. So we know we can rule out A and D. And then from there, we just need to decide if it's 1, 000, or, uh, 161 or 160. So 160 is a puncture aspiration of an abscess, hematoma, bulla, or a cyst. No, sorry, that's not even the right code. 160, I was looking at 10160. 160 is the incision and drainage of the abscess. Um, it can either be a carbuncle, superlative hydratinitis, uh, cutaneous or subcutaneous abscess, cyst, furuncle, or par parenchyma simple or single, and then 161 is a complicated or multiple. So with the drainage that we did here, that is going to be considered a simple, right? So we're going to have 160 as the CPT code. 
go here. We did an incision and in open the cyst. So there's our support for that. So very quickly, without even looking at the alphabetic index, from a testing perspective, we were easily able to rule out two. So we were able to rule out A and D. And then we just had to decide if that incision and drainage was either a simple or a complex or a complicated. And then we were able to pick out our answer. So test taking prep is very easy. Well, no, I don't want to say very easy. It's a lot easier than real world, fill in, not fill in the blanks, but just real world, just coding from scratch, right? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. So how do we know that it's simple? Because they don't talk about how it, like there was any complications of it. There's no purulence. It was just a very simple incision. They opened it up. They removed the cystic material. So there's nothing indicating that it was a complex or a complex or complicated incision and drainage. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. So again, test taking coding is completely different from real world. So that's why I like to show you guys both, right? You want to know how to do process of elimination and get through it pretty quickly. But then again, you also want to know how to code things from scratch because real world, you're not going to have multiple choice to rule things out. So. Any questions on that one? Okay. Let's actually skip number nine because I want to touch on this Mohs micrographic surgery here on number 10. So let's skip to um, number 10. 56-year-old pro golfer is having Mohs micrographic surgery for skin cancer on his forehead. The surgeon performs the surgery with two stages. The first stage includes four tissue blocks, and then the second stage includes six tissue blocks. So what are gonna be the codes for both of our stages? So um, let's look at it from a coding from scratch, not a test taking standpoint. So our main term, we wanna look at MOHS, M-O-H-S, And then that gives us a range of codes from 17311 to 17315. So if we look at our 17311, then it talks about your Mohs micrographic surgery, including the removal of all of your uh, gross tumor, surgical excision of the tissue specimens, um, mapping, color coding the specimens, microscopic examination of the specimens by the surgeon, and any histopathologic preparation, including your uh, routine stains. And then again, anatomic locations of head, neck, hands, feet, genitalia, or any location with surgery directly involving muscles, cartilage, bone, tendon, major nerves, or vessels. So this one is on the forehead. So it falls within that 17311 code because anatomic location is on the head. Okay, so we have two stages. 17311 is for the first stage up to five tissue blocks. So the first stage includes four tissue blocks. So we need to code 17311, right, for our first stage up to five, which includes the four tissue blocks. And then we have a second stage that includes 
six tissue blocks. So our second stage is going to be our 17312 because it's the second stage. So it's each additional stage after the first stage. And then it only includes up to five tissue blocks. So since we have six tissue blocks, we have one additional tissue block that we still have to perform or that we still have to code. So if you flip your page to 17315, that's going to be for each additional block after the first five tissue blocks in a single stage. So we also have to code CPT 17315 for our sixth tissue block. Does that make sense? Okay. So does everybody know what MOSE is? MOSE can be a little tricky to, to comprehend. Does everybody know what MOSE is? Does everybody know what a stage is? And does everybody know what a block is? Does anybody need me to explain that? Unfortunately, you? yes. Can okay. you no, explain that? Yes, please. That's totally fine. That's why I wanted to touch on it because I know that this is another like kind of muddy area. So MOS is when your surgeon acts as both the surgeon and the pathologist. Okay. So what they're going to do is they're going to operate. They're typically going to do MOS procedures on areas um, that they have to be very careful with the closure to make sure that there's not a lot of scar tissue. Um, so anywhere on the face um, or like on the neck, um, sometimes they do it on the arms if the tissue is real thin. Um, but basically what they do is they go in and they take a slice of tissue out of the patient. Each one of those slices is known as a stage. Okay, so stages equal the number of slices of tissue that they take out of the body. Okay, once they have that stage outside of the body, what they're going to do is they're going to thinly slice that stage multiple times, depending on how many times they indicate that they do it. They're going to thinly slice that stage, and then they're going to look at it under a microscope. What they're looking at under the microscope is to determine whether or not they have gotten all of the margins and gotten all of the malignant cells. And then if they look at it under the margin or under the microscope with the first stage, all of the blocks they've looked at it under and they look at it under the microscope and they say, hey, there's still malignant cells. So we need to take another stage from the patient. So they're gonna go back to the patient. They're gonna take another slice of tissue outside of the patient, right? Then they're gonna take that slice out of the patient. They're gonna go back to the microscope and they're gonna, they're gonna, well, they're gonna slice it again multiple times. They're gonna look at it under the microscope and they're gonna say, clear margins, great, we can close up. If there's not clear margins, They'll go in again for a third stage, okay? So basically that pathologist is making sure before they even close the patient up that they have all of the malignant cells. Again, they do it because, especially on the face, because the more times that they close the patient up, let them semi-heal over a couple of days and then open them back up, that's gonna increase the risk of scar tissue and scarring and nobody really wants scarring on their face. Um, so that's why they do it that way. If for any reason your, your surgeon sends out those tissues to a pathologist for any reason that is no longer codable as a Mohs micrographic surgery, because in order for them to get paid for a Mohs micrographic surgery, they have to be both the surgeon and the pathologist. Okay. So in this scenario, they went back to the patient. So they took the first stage out. They sliced it up four times. They looked underneath the microscope and said, nope, there's still um, your malignant cells. So we're going to go back to the patient. They did it again. That second stage, they sliced it into six blocks. They looked underneath the microscope and they said, okay, we've got clear margins. We'll close the patient up and then we're good to go. Does that make sense? Any questions on Mo's? I, I have a question with regards to the 17315. Okay. Um, I, I'm understanding that 
an add-on code and why, but they, for whatever reason, it was more than that six, say it was like 11 blocks. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's possible, but you wouldn't quantify the 17315, would you? You can, because it's each additional block after the tissue blocks, after the first five. So if they had okay. seven tissue blocks, then it would be one, seven, three, one, two, and then one, seven, or one, seven, three, one, one, whichever slice it's in, right? Whichever stage is in, then it would be one, okay. seven, three, one, five times two or times okay, three so or times five. four. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you can use multiple units for the one, seven, three, one, five. Yeah. Because it's okay. each unit or each block after the first five blocks. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So have, Absolutely. Good question. So I have a question. So if it's if it's twice at the end would be times two, or you code 17315 and 17315 two times. You can do it either way. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. So they basically tell the same story. If you report 17315, comma 17315, you've still got two units of the 17315. But from a, like whenever you're in the real world, what you would do on your claim form is you would have 17312 on one line and then your 17315 on a separate line. And then you would have your units over to the right hand side that show how many units of that 17315. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. And one more question. So it says four tissue block. Mm-hmm. So is it four tissue they cut four times? So it's just one tissue block and they do four tissue or something. How is it? So your your stage is what they cut out of the patient. And so that first stage, they cut into four separate specimens to look at under the microscope. And then your second stage, they cut that second stage into six individual specimens. So they cut it into six different pieces of tissue to look at. I got it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So Sylvia, you're not going to add your blocks together in your individual stages. So you're only going to count the additional tissue blocks per stage. So if you look at your 17311, that includes up to five. So that's why we didn't report an add-on code for the first stage because it includes four tissue blocks. The second stage for the 17312, that again includes up to five tissue blocks. And then we have to code the 17315 once for the sixth tissue block on the second stage. This one block cannot be adjusted in the first stage. I mean, there was one tissue block left over to complete it. Okay. Any other questions? I have one question, Tiffany. Okay. You were saying yeah. um, you if it was like seven, so what, what if it was seven and you coded the 17315 times two? Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. So if you have, let's just say, I'm just going to say um, single stage, right? I'm just going to type it out down here with seven uh, tissue blocks, right? Is that what you're mm-hmm. asking? Yes, correct. Okay. So you would have 173. I'm just going to say this is the first one, right? Just for mm-hmm. for complex or for for I guess making it as easy as possible to understand. So okay. you have your 17311, right? Mm-hmm. You have your yes. 17315. Sorry, I had to mm-hmm. think about that for a second. I have 17315 times 2 mm-hmm. because right. this is the first five uh blocks. Mm-hmm. This is sixth and seventh block okay gotcha does that make sense yes it does Mm -hmm. okay thank you so if you're in the second stage then it would be your one seven three one two instead of one seven three one one yeah 
Right. But your 17315, again, you can add multiple units of that to mm -hmm. indicate how many additional tissue blocks, again, only for that second stage. The second stage. Okay. Now, let's say, for instance, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Let's say, for instance, we have an additional stage, right? That mm -hmm. has um, another seven tissue blocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you would have 17312 again for the first five. Mm -hmm. And then you would have 17315 again times two. Ooh, for the seven. Okay. For the sixth and seven. And seven. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. You're welcome. Absolutely. I know. I most can get it's, it's yeah, such a pain it's, in my butt. I'm not gonna no, lie. No. It it's is so hard. <laughs> it is a very it's a simple thing once you once you grasp it, right? Mm -hmm. And once you look back on it, you're like, oh, that makes total sense, right? But sometimes it just takes a couple different ways of explaining it until that that light bulb finally goes on and says, duh, why didn't I get mm. that? Right. And they they'll probably so, yeah. trick you on the exam as far as yeah trying to confuse you when it comes to that way yeah, yeah. and oh, it God. all is just going to depend on the wording of the of the um of the scenario so just remember you want to only look at in this scenario we didn't have mm -hmm. additional right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in this one we did so okay. they could have on the exam that this one has maybe six and then your second yeah, only has one. four so okay. Your coding is still going to be the same, right? Because your 17315 is going to be there. Mm -hmm. But the 17315 is going to have a lower RVU. So it's going to be sequenced after the 17312, not the 17311. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's going to okay. be afterwards. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But again, only use mm -hmm. your 17315 for each additional stage. Additional. Or, I'm sorry, That's additional blocks. Okay. Yep. I know. See, it's sometimes and it, and it easy to be for me to confuse the terminology too. But it has to be in sequence in in reality though, right? More or less. So I'm gonna you know, tell you I'm gonna tell you a very unpopular opinion, but uh, don't take this from a testing perspective. Okay. okay. In real world, mm. your insurance companies are not gonna give a crap how they are sequenced. Okay. 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 Then you're right. only going to look at whether or not your 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 primary codes are on the claim and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, from an insurance perspective, they are not going to look at if they're out of order, and then they're not going to take the money back just for mm -hmm. you to reorganize them the way that they should, and then they're okay. going to turn around and pay it anyways. Okay. Because essentially, the insurance company at that point is going to be out of money. Because mm -hmm. they are going to spend the time setting up that recoupment mm -hmm. and then turning around and having to pay it. So really, right. they're, they're breaking even on the amount that was paid, but now they had to pay somebody to do a job that didn't even really have to be done. Right. right? Okay. Gotcha. So like I said, from mm -hmm. a real world perspective, and it plus most of, your, most of your coding software is going to order it in RVU order anyways. Oh, okay. Yeah. But okay. just in the off stance that you have to submit a paper claim for anything, or if it gets out of order for whatever reason, it's really mm -hmm. not going to matter. Okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Good questions. Good conversation. Anything else that you guys can think of? So I have a question. Um, yeah. Reading reading this, why would you not use 17314? And I was just reading it in the book and it says for additional stages. So let me get back to the codes. Why? Yep. Why? So you, you would not use 17314 because it's in the anatomic grouping for trunks, arms, and legs. Okay, I need to read the whole thing. <laughs> so here's when I talk about book prep and how book prep is so important, right? I'm going to show you guys something here real quick. If I can get this synced up, I just took a picture of it. Whether it's going to take five years <laughs> for it to sync up or if it's going to do it semi-quickly. 
when you hear a lot of people talk about book prep. Yeah. So Jennifer, I'm going exactly where you're going with the, the color coding your body parts. Um, I'm trying to get it to sync here real quick. Here we go. So here is what my personal book looks like. So I have my groupings, right, of, of putting my parent code together with my any indented codes. But then anytime it talks about anatomic groupings, I have those stand out even more. Okay, thank you very so much. So that's always book prep is a huge thing. If you need help with book prep, um, I do have files on the Legacy website where I teach. Um, I do have files that you can purchase to help you book prep um, that will basically like tell you what you can write in and notes and what you can underline and all of that. Um, then yes, you can have this on the exam if you're taking your CPC exam. The only thing that you cannot write in your books are going to be questions and answers. So like scenarios and answers or rationale from practice exams, um, anything along those lines. You can write anatomy terms, you can write medical terms, you can write definitions, you can like over here on the destruction area, you can see that I've got each lesion written next to them. So that way I know that I can use multiple units for lesions. Um, I've got all of my do not reports um, in there. Honestly, Dana, I've heard some, some proctors will let you take them. And, and some proctors won't. So it all just depends on your luck of the draw with your proctors. So why do you have it circled like that? Um... Because it's, ba it's basically helping me um, very easily identify what's in this group underneath this, this parent code. Okay, that totally makes sense. Yeah. So like, for example, over here, if I didn't have these circles here or I didn't have my, um, what's the words I'm trying to use? My words have like totally escaped me. If it doesn't, if I didn't have these to where I very easily see what my standalone portion of the codes are, right, then I may get lost in the book and try to figure out, I may accidentally skip this. And I may think that this lesion diameter goes with 17270, right? But this just helps my eyes know that these codes are in the same anatomic grouping. These codes are in the same anatomic grouping. These are in the same anatomic grouping, so on and so forth. Does that help? Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. And Karen, since you are a legacy student, um, let, if you don't have the OneDrive folder, let me know and I will send you the OneDrive folder with all of the book prep in it. Okay, thank you. Is, since you're a legacy student, you get those um, for free. Okay, any questions? Anything else you want to chat about before we end? No, good study. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome. All right. Well, next week we will start with musculoskeletal. Um, we will um, do, so Sylvia, for the CPC exam, you have to have the AMA version of the CPT. Um, and then it doesn't matter what version of the ICB-10, CM, or HCPCS manual you have. Um, but the only one that is highly regulated is the AMA CPT. If you go on to the, C, uh, the uh, AAPC website, then it'll tell you what books are allowed for what exam. So you can go out there and look at it that way. Okay. Well, next week we will start with musculoskeletal. Um, the questions are already in there for next week. Um, I got a little bit ahead 
um, this weekend since we uh, went through the um, Sherry, are you a legacy student? What's your last name? Okay, yeah, I'll get that. I'll I'll get that over to you too, Sherry. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If not, then we will chat next week. All right, you guys Tiffany, have. Yeah, Tiffany, I have, I have one quick question. Yeah, of course. I have di uh, I have Discord on my phone. Okay. And then for these weekly meetings, I use my, you know, large computer so I can mm -hmm. see. Yep. How do you get to the um, session on the computer? Like I have to like hit the link on my phone and then look at my old history on the computer to get to it. Is that a stupid um, question? <laughs> do you have an iPhone? No. Or do you have, you have Android? Android. I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how your, if your app is um formulated the way that mine is but if it is <laughs> because you know how like they they all look a little bit different oh yeah um I can't even find the discord app on my phone right now like I don't know why <laughs> my brain like my brain is literally done for today I'm trying to find my folder that has discord I'm just gonna have to type it in um if you go to your discord app okay um mine has a little arrow over on the top left that kind of points to the left do you see that nope okay do you <laughs> have um i'm trying to think of how to explain it if it's not a big deal i can keep doing what i'm doing okay. but yeah um, i'll just if start up at the earlier. top where it says meeting schedule and files do you see that do you see a, yep. a little tab that says meeting schedule and files yep Okay, click on that. And then there should be an option to see like a threads channel. Okay. Yeah. Click on threads. And then there should be one that says files for weekly study group. Okay. Okay. Scroll all the way up to the top. And then that Google Drive is all the way up at the top. Uh -huh. Do you see it? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You are very welcome. All right, ladies, have a good rest of your night and good rest of your week. And we will chat next week. Thank you, Tiff. You're welcome.